the, uh, the sister uh, local to this, uh, to the wonderful locals who are putting on this amazing demonstration for you guys. Um, and I'm here to, uh, to again, uh, reiterate that solidarity. First, I want to thank the folks from the national and statewide movement for making the journey out here to show their solidarity to us. Thank you so much. thing together, right? We're all up against the bosses together. We're all getting stalled by our management together. We're all one working class fighting against authoritarianism together. Um, and like we're one like generation, a group of generations fighting against like a couple of different apocalypses together. And we are only going to be able to win big things like racial justice or not letting the country burn down or the world burn down by fighting where we stand by organizing where we are, by winning the little power that we can and letting it grow. And that is what we are doing here today. And I, just, I want to thank you guys all so much for, uh, for giving me so much hope and so much power because I absolutely love uh, seeing crowds like this. It uh, gives me uh, so much hope for the future. Um, at NGLT, we're facing similar stuff to what, uh, what the folks here at Rutgers are. Mandarin is doggedly stalling us. They are inventing things. Uh, to attempt to keep us from negotiating. Um, but I know that uh, standing together, doing uh, doing street actions, being willing to fight wherever they, they want to fight, being willing to fight even they refuse to show up, is how we are going to, to push back and how we are going to win this thing. So uh, thank you guys all so much for making this happen. Uh, expect you guys to get your authorization and um, I would not be expecting anybody at NJIT from UCAN or from the uh, or from the PSA uh, to be crossing any picket lines. Educational allowance, 
and provide basic mental health care benefits to help them process the trauma of caring for patients in an often racist, classist, and inhumane health care system. Yeah. 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 What everyone here is asking for is more than reasonable. And to the faculty that are taking your strike authorization to vote today, and to all of the Rutgers workers, I am so proud to be in solidarity and demand that Rutgers do right by you and by New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Blocker, and thanks to everyone here. My name is Dustin Byron, and I'm a Rutgers resident physician in orthopedic surgery and a member of my union, CIR. It really is an honor to be with you all here today as we demand answers from this institution that depends on all of us, the people that make it run. Yeah. Every day I see the sacrifices my colleagues make in order to serve our patients at University Hospital and beyond. And I'm simply here to say that it's vitally important that they're fairly compensated. Yes. In the past few years, we've all seen the cost of living increase, particularly here in New Jersey. And I think it's more than reasonable to ask that our employer pay us all fairly so that we can worry just a little bit less about affording childcare, paying rent, and buying groceries. Yeah! It's about basic fairness and equity. Considering our 80-hour work week, first-year Rutgers resident physicians make about $16 an hour, with minor increases each subsequent year. It's really not enough. And here's the thing about trying to quantify our pay or hours. My wife will tell you. Sometimes I come home from work and I'm really still there. You're dealing with traumatic things, in my case, people's livelihoods and their limbs, and in the case of many of my colleagues, our patients' lives. It's really hard to just let that go and go home and have a normal dinner. And that's why we as residents are also bargaining for a crucial mental health care benefit. With extreme hours, understaffed hospitals and patients' lives in our hands, the psychological toll of this job is very real. And that's about patient care too. We have to be able to take care of ourselves if we want to provide our best care to patients. This fight is simply too important to accept Rutgers' tactics and delays. This place could not run without any of us. nurses, x-ray techs, scrub techs in our hospitals, to the facilities workers and educators on our campuses, to the faculty taking a strike authorization vote today, CIR is in complete solidarity with you. It's time for Rutgers to listen to all of us. Thank you. Yeah. Just to finish up, just to finish up that this university cannot profess to stand for the liberal ideas of democracy and fair treatment and disrespect its workers. It's a contradiction. The university should provide the best wages, the best working conditions for the workers here. We, People's Organization for Progress, we support equal pay for equal work. We support a living wage for the adjunct faculty. We support security and decent wages for all the workers here at Rutgers University. And now, the great Chris Smalls. When do we want it? Now! When do we want it? Contract! When do we want it? Now! And if we don't get it! Shut it down! And if we don't get it! Shut it down! And if we don't get it! Shut it down! And if we don't get it! Shut it down! And if we don't get it! Shut it down! One more time, we don't get it! Shut it down!
warm them up. You know, we got to warm up out here. So, unfortunately, it's cold out here, but we have to be out here because we have to remind them who has the power. We have to remind them every time where the power remains. And we got to remind them that we're going to shut it down until we get what we rightfully deserve. So everybody here is in the same struggle. Everybody here is in the same fight. But we also, besides reminding the bosses, reminding the institutions, re reminding corporations, reminding billionaires, we got to remind ourselves why we are in this fight. We got to remind ourselves what we commit ourselves to. And remind ourselves that this is a long haul. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And we're going to be out here every day. Or are we going to be out here until we get what we deserve? Because we're at a point. We're at a point right now in this country of no return. We saw what the pandemic did to us. We see where our money is going every single day. It's going to Ukraine. It's going to the politicians' pockets. It's going to people's pockets that make decisions for us. But guess what? We are here today because we're saying enough is enough. And we're going to get what we want. And we're going to fight back. Because when we fight back, we what? We win. When we fight back, we win. When we fight back, we win. When we fight back, we win. Every damn time. So remind yourselves. Yeah, it's cold outside, but it's hot when it's labor. When we're talking about labor, it's hot all the time. So remind yourselves, once again, we got to remind the bosses. We got to remind them who has the power. And we got to remind them why, why they reap the benefits off of our back. We're going to get what we deserve. So I'm not going to keep this long because I, I have a, a, a long battle I have to get back to. But understand this, doesn't matter what industry you're in. Doesn't matter who you work for. Doesn't matter what movement you're a part of. Social injustice, environmental, women's rights, gun laws. It goes on and on. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're a worker. At the end of the day, if you're a student, you're a worker. At home, you're a worker. Unemployed, you're a worker. Even if you're homeless, you're a worker. So understand, this is your fight. This is our fight. This is the community fight. We have to understand. People don't wake up and go watch Democracy Now. They don't go home and watch labor leaders on TV or on left media. We have to be our own propaganda. Understand that we have to be our own propaganda. We have to get labor. We have to talk about labor in spaces that never been talked about before. And you're starting to see that in this country. But let me tell you, we're still ways away from where we need to be. Union density is less than 10%. But let me tell y'all, I don't feel that way. Every day, every week, I'm joining a new picket line somewhere across the country, even somewhere across the world. Because that's what it's about. Showing up. Because that's what solidarity is. Solidarity is free, and solidarity is showing up for one another. And right now, today is step one, but it ain't the end. Understand that this fight is going to go on and on and on. But we here today to make a statement. And if we don't get it, we what? Shut it down! If we don't get it! 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 Shut it down! Now look to your left and look to your right and say, I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. And the power will always remain with the people. Power to the people, y'all. So I love you. Let's hear for Chris Smalls, y'all. Make it time for solidarity for us. We're going to make time for him when the time comes. We'll be out on the picket line with Amazon. Y'all ready to go? Come on up. Woo! Feeling good, feeling warm. Love to see everybody here. If you're a member and you didn't vote for the strike, already vote. Here we go. 
Hi everybody, my name is Justin O'Hay. I'm co-president of HPAE Local 5094 at Rutgers University. <laughs> I'm also joined here by the other co-president, Ryan Novoselsky, who's hiding back here somewhere. Uh, he's on a live feed at the moment. We represent over 2,000 healthcare professionals and other aligned professionals throughout the former UMDNJ and Rutgers system. I myself am a licensed clinical social worker. I work in mental health and addictions. And I can tell you guys, there's been no time in modern history harder than the time that we're in right now when it comes to dealing with this, this crisis. And frankly, it's not a crisis of mental health. We're in a situation here right now where, how do I say this? What Rutgers University is doing to us is the same thing that Rutgers, or the same thing that really our government does. It puts austerity on people. And you know what austerity is, guys? Yeah. Class war. Yeah. We are in a class war right now with Rutgers University. They think that they can do anything, they can say anything, that they're above the law. We're in a situation right now where we're, we're, we're threatened with privatization. Our jobs are being um, handed over to a private corporation with RWJ Barnabas. Rutgers lied to us for years. They lied to us for years. We had proof. We had data in our hands. We had a, a proverbial smoking gun. They lied to our face for, for years about this. And finally, they passed a piece of paper across the table to us for us to just rubber stamp it. They admitted to doing it. They're privatizing our jobs. And we're afraid that this might be a blueprint for the rest of the institution. RBHS has a plan. To, to, to likely hand over all the clinical operations from RBHS to RWJ Barnabas and pretty much possibly slash, slash our union in half, probably even worse. I'll tell you, our, our state Fed president was supposed to be here today. I'm kind of speaking in lieu of her, kind of off the cuff, but I'll tell you this, guys. We showed up here to stand with AAUP and our brother and sister unions in a, in a, in a show of solidarity to let Rutgers know that we're damn serious. I'll stand out here in the cold all day long as long as it's as long as it's speaking truth to power against this corporate monolith. Don't think that because it's a state university that it's not a corporate monolith. That's right. We are in a class war right now, guys, and I want you to remember that. That's all I gotta say. I'm Kai Cobbs, a student organizer here at Newark. I'm speaking in support of the Union for Living Wages for Faculty. Why should a tenured professor be making 100 grand when adjuncts who do the same work make a third of that? But this makes sense, coming from a university that defunds not just its faculty, but also its campuses. Newark students demand the respect and funding we deserve. Why is the university spending millions of dollars on the black hole that is administrative costs in athletics? Yeah! Throwing away millions of dollars for athletic debt for an awful football team. Yeah! This year, they've gambled away 135 million on sports instead of improving facilities and pay for adjuncts. Shame. The academic departments are forced to subsidize athletics and, administra and, and administrative costs, effectively forcing the state-funded institution to chase profit instead of funding the often underserved and working class students here. Shame. This campus is being looted. We're being robbed. That's right. Right. We demand or we generate a $67 million surplus. Yep. It is obviously and transparently not being reinvested here. That's right. That's right. We demand this come back to us. We deserve to see the amount we put in reflected in our campus facilities and in the wages of our professors and staff. <laughs> Groundwater, cold showers, mold, roaches, leaks, stained floors, holes in walls. And, an, and overall academic buildings are falling apart. The difference between tuition for the North Campus and the, and the New Brunswick Campus is only $181. Why is the gap of quality so big when the gap of cost is so small? The Board of Governors and their cowardice decided not to show up today. But who's out here for standing for you, North students? It is your professors. Yeah. 
It's your professors, not the administrators that claim to know about you. And get paid to know what's best. Yeah. 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 Alright y'all, my name is Lou, I'm here speaking on behalf of grad workers and first of all that's an honor, I'm honored to be here with my colleagues, if you're a grad worker, you deserve a living wage, do you deserve a living wage? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, 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 alright, so I'm in my first year of my PhD um, on the New Brunswick campus in women, gender, and sexuality studies. I just want to remind y'all that we make the university run. Yeah. So therefore, we can bring it all to a stop yep. with a strike. And, and we will. So, I'm just, I want to say I, I'm grateful to each and every one of you who made it out here today, because you know the BOG didn't. They're probably at home on Zoom. Uh, and from wherever you traveled, because like many of you, I literally commute out of state multiple days a week to be here, giving my time and energy to this university, not because management shows us any appreciation, and I know y'all know that like on payday, you know, you see that, but because I believe in student and worker organizing. I'm gonna say that again. I believe in student and worker organizing. I believe in our collective power at this university. I believe, sorry, it is because of student organizing that we are here today. It is because of the incredible work of my PTL and adjunct faculty colleagues in their union that we are here today. It is because of my graduate colleagues in the GSC that we are here today um, and beyond that we have this amazing infrastructure to connect and work with each other for a better Rutgers. So this is only my second semester, by the way, but it didn't take long for me to find that strength and solidarity that exists here amongst the unions. Uh, and I have many of my grad worker colleagues to thank me for bamboozling me, or rather, ushering me <laughs> lovingly into this space, into this community of solidarity. I was a bit intimidated, but I learned a lot really quick. So y'all might have seen that zine, uh, Grievance Culture, floating around. I made that with a couple comrades. Because I learned that management would rather condescend to us from a podium than sit down at the bargaining table That's and right. respond to our day-to-day -day needs. I learned that somehow the university gets away with paying winter and summer instructors at a lower per credit rate, severely lower I will note, to teach the same classes on a condensed timeline. And we just, uh, with some comrades, rewrote that contract and proposed it to management last week. And so I learned if we want a different workplace, a different Rutgers, and a different world too, to shout out to my panelists who brought some amazing points. We can bring it about in collective struggle. Yep. All right. So, woo. My, all right, all right. So all of this is the labor of organizing. I just want to stress that. This is the work of organizing, and it is the work, the labor of educators, of staff, of workers that keeps Rutgers or any educational institution going. And still, y'all are so much more than your labor, by the way. We've earned so much more than the lip service that management gives us. That's right. So they're about to head in their meeting, probably a couple minutes. Uh, they're about to head up there and drum up some more excuses uh, and continue to consolidate the financial resources of this university, which thanks to student reporting and student journalism, we know is almost a $365 profit. You know, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and they're, uh, they're gonna be putting all this together probably towards some provost vacation bonus, so we don't like that. But we cannot afford for this to be another campaign where we accept the scraps that fall off the table, where the elite bureaucrats of this public institution sit and make decisions that make or break our life chances. This is a public university but it behaves like a corporation because it is a corporation by engineering scarcity and engaging in austerity politics. I want to cite uh, one of my panel, one of the panelists, Professor Margaret Stevens, from our panel just an hour ago, who put it. Essex Community College. Yes. Yeah, yeah. ECC. So who put it really beautifully that this university manufactures education in the same way 
the Prudential manufactures life insurance. So, but, in a, but again, the power here is in the work we do together for each other and for ourselves. My union comrade, Mish, who can't be here today, but love you, Mish. Love Mish. We all love Mish. Ah, always reminds me that no one is going to give you what you know you deserve. There comes a point where we can decide collectively that we believe in our own power to claim what we deserve. And that power is to strike. And we will strike. Yeah. We are tired. We are fed up with the excuses. And we will win. Thank you. this morning to support you all today. In Miami, Florida, Sarah, it's 88 degrees. So it's cold out here, but labor's going to heat it up, right? On behalf of the 1.7 million members across this country that are AFT and AAUP, we stand strong with you on your fight for a fair contract. Rutgers University is only a world-class university because of the people behind the classrooms and in our healthcare facilities and in our, uh, our, our offices. And they sweep and they clean and they do everything that it takes for a world-class university to be world-class. So we've got the rat here. Rutgers administration, you've got time. You've got time to make this right. You've got time to give your time to the people, to give funds to the people, to understand what's actually going on, to know whose shoulders you stand on, to know who understands our students and who's gonna push this university forward. That is people, that is professors, that's adjuncts, that's graduate assistants, that's healthcare workers, that's the family of all of us who make this happen. So I just came by to let you know that AFT is gonna be with you AFT is not only here, we got your back, we've got your front, we've got your side, we're going to walk with you, we're going to stand with you. On behalf of Donna Sierra, our AFT New Jersey president, let's give her a big round of applause. When she told me she needed me to come up here, I said, Donna, I'm fighting the worst governor in America right now, in Florida. You know, so I definitely need your back down there, because... But what, what, is, what is different here in Florida, they're trying to undermine all of higher education. Rutgers has time to be different. That's right. That's Rutgers right. has time to be a world-class university. Right. You don't have to take the power away from the people who care about students every day. You don't have to take the power away from our researchers. You don't have to take the power away from our medical doctors. You don't have to take the power away from our nurses and our secretaries and our adjuncts and our grad assistants. They care about students. They care about this neighborhood. They care about this community. They're going to stand strong. We should not be here in the cold. The first day of snow, we should be inside with our students, taking care of patients. But now we've got to stand against a boss who doesn't understand and doesn't respect what we're doing every day. This is what democracy looks like. When I say this is what democracy looks like, you say this is what democracy looks like. 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 Democracy looks like you and you and you and you and you and you and you. tell you stay together this is going to be a hard fight 
Stay together. Anytime you take a strike vote, you got to stay together. The boss wants to divide and conquer. Don't let them do it to the House of Labor. We all do the same thing and the same work, and we care about the same issues. So make sure that you stand strong. Make sure you're together. Make sure that we can transform Rutgers University into the world-class university it ought to be. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Solidarity. Come on, y'all. Give, give Sarah a big round of applause, y'all. Come on, now. He came from sunny skies to fight that war. I came from the sunny skies, too. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Rutgers has a little bit of time. But in the meantime, what are we going to do? Strike! 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 Good morning, Rutgers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, House of Labor. We are Rutgers. Listen, my name is Abdur Yassin. I'm a PTL here, right here in Newark. Yeah. Let's hear it for the Rutgers Rat. Oh, yeah. And look, look, there's Rutgers workers that cleaned off these sidewalks, that cleaned off these walkways. We're out here, right? Where's the Board of Governors? Oh, you can't do this over a Zoom. You can't do this over a Zoom, right? Let's have a discussion. We're supposed to be a beloved community, right? Yeah. Board of Govs, why don't you show us some real love? Yeah. Board of Govs, show us some real love. Yeah. Look, PTLs, adjuncts, we're among the most vulnerable of the Rutgers community. We're looking for three things here. Equal pay for equal work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Our PTLs. Our PTLs are making less than the lowest paid faculty member. Equal pay for equal work. Rutgers Board of Govs, show us some real love. We're looking for access to health care. Yes, some of us have health care, but some of us do not. We're amongst the most vulnerable, vulnerable of the Rutgers community. Last but not least, job security. We're looking for a pathway. We're looking for a pathway to full-time employment. We want some security to know that every, some, some of us, some of our PTLs that have been here for decades don't know from semester to semester whether or not they're going to be teaching the classes that they love. That's right. That affects you, students. That affects you. If you don't have certain classes, then you can't graduate. Think about that. Okay? Board of Govs, show us some real love. Right. You can't Zoom this. This is about respect. I don't know about you. I signed my, my strike authorization card. I'm ready to strike. I got my sticker right here. Rutgers, are you ready? Are you ready, Rutgers? Strike, 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 Dr. King's famous words, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. everywhere. Right. An injustice within anyone, anybody within the Rutgers community is a threat, is a threat to justice for all of us. If there's any injustice that affects any of us, it's a threat to justice for all of us. We are united, Rutgers. We are united. But we have to be united for this issue. This moment, we have, we have friends in labor throughout the country, throughout the country, across industries, here in solidarity with us. The elements did not stop us. Yes, it is cold out here, but we're about to turn up the heat. So let's go. Let's go. Thank you. It's solidarity. Thank you, y'all. That's right. Come on, Shelby. You're up. All right, y'all fired up? Yeah. Hi, my name is Shelby. I'm an NTT in New Brunswick. And 
And I wanted to tell y'all a story about uh, my writing classes. I teach expos, and I was explaining neoliberal capitalism the other day. <laughs> this is a result of neoliberal capitalism for the last 40 years in this country, privatizing the things that should be the people's right. And I was explaining the Reagan, da Reagan trickle-down economics. And I had a student raise her hand, and she said, why did anybody fall for that? <laughs> and I was like, that's a good question. That's a very good question. And we still have that going on right now. And this is what Rutgers is acting on. They're trying to privatize our medical industry. They're trying to privatize, they're trying to make adjuncts the primary workforce at Rutgers so they don't have to pay us health insurance. Yeah. Right. This, is, this is neoliberal bullshit. And frankly, I tell my students all the time, I say, Think global, act local. Yeah. Think global, act local. So this is not just neoliberalism here in New Jersey. This is neoliberalism in Florida, in every state in this country. We're fighting as a union for Rutgers, but also for all other higher educators in this nation. And that's why people are striking all over the country, in California, in New York, in New Jersey, because the academic profession has been denigrated over the last 40 years. We are not getting compensated for the very important work that we do. Without education, our democracy cannot stand. It would fall. But you know what? That's kind of what they want. That's kind of what they want. So we're out here not just fighting for Rutgers, we're fighting for our democracy, we're fighting for our students, we're fighting for the equity that we should have in this country, the richest country in the world. Why are we not, why am I struggling to pay my rent? I'm a full-time professor at Rutgers University and I'm struggling to pay my rent right now. How many of you guys have student debt? We got student debt all over the place. We have student debt and we are keep asking, they keep asking us to sacrifice. So even during COVID, right, they asked us to sacrifice and take a wage stagnation and we did it. They asked us now because of the healthcare costs of COVID, they raised our healthcare premiums for the entire state of New Jersey government workers this year. They're passing the buck on to us. Why is it with the people who have the least resources are always the ones who are asked to make the sacrifices? This is Think Global, Act Local. This is neoliberal capitalism, and it's got to stop, and we're here to stand up for it today. Thank you guys for being here. the Union of Rutgers Administrators. <laughs> We're not those administrators like the Mike Gower. We're not your deans. We're not management. We're, we, we are your staff. We're here. We recruit you. We put you on payroll. We schedule your classes. We advise you. We're here to support you. So we, we, we love our students. We love our faculty, our PTLs. We stand with you in solidarity. We need our Rutgers administrators. Let's hear from your way. We're going to stand with your way. They're going to stand with us. They're the ones who do the work, not the people sitting in the offices when you get paid, when you need a class, when you need to enroll. It's people like Joe. It's not the people in the offices, all right? Yeah. Now we're going to bring up our uh, president of our Newark chapter, Monty Chander. Come on up. You hold that sign up back there? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Right. Yeah. Four words. Equal pay. Equal work. Equal pay. Equal work. Equal pay. Equal work. This university loves to talk about its diversity. Yeah. It loves to talk about its black and brown students, its first generation students, its adult learners. But when it comes time to show up for Newark and Camden, where's the love? We work for you. AAUP, AFT, we professors work for the students of Newark. That's 
and the students of Camden and the students of New Brunswick. Our teaching conditions are your learning conditions. So tell me, how come our university administration values Camden and Newark so little that they pay your professors less? Where's the love? Equal pay! Equal pay! Equal pay! How come your adjuncts that spend time and sweat for nothing are not valued by this university? Aren't they workers? Yeah. Adjuncts, are you workers? Yeah. Faculty, are you workers? Yeah. Students, are you workers? Yeah. Rutgers, are we workers? Yeah. Equal pay! Equal pay! President Association of Flight Attendants. Thank you. Thank you, Rutgers. I, sh I just while I was standing up here, I got a call from the great Bernie Sanders. social justice. Social justice is at the key of the principles that this country was supposedly founded on, but we have yet to experience. And so when you take this strike vote, and by the way, I want everyone to raise your hand right now, promise to me that you are going to talk to at least 10 people today. Ten people tomorrow! Ten people the next day! And we're going to keep doing that until everyone on this campus hit campus! I'm <laughs> getting the snow talking. Until everyone 
on this campus helps this university understand that solidarity is a force stronger than gravity and we are ready to practice it, use it, and strike as we must! All right, now the way that, hey, there's my people. <laughs> now the way, the way to get results is to define the problem. Everybody up here defined the problem for us, didn't they? It is clear what the problem is here at Rutgers. And it is clear what the problem is all over this country. Then you have to set your demands. Pretty damn clear demands here from this stage from all of you, right? Then you gotta add some urgency. That's coming with this strike vote that starts today. And then you gotta let the bosses know what you're willing to do to back up your demands and take them to the table in a fair way to meet the demands that you have on the table. They're the demands of the people who create the profits that make it possible for Rutgers to run and make it possible for the provost to have his, his uh, vacation. Bullshit! Keep the money with the people! Now, we have someone special up here who already spoke, who gave me a lot of hope this year. I bet he gave you a lot of hope this year. And it wasn't just him. He built a community. Because in our workplaces, it is the bosses who choose who's going to work there. But in our workplaces, it is all of us that have more in common than anything that can divide us. And so they did the impossible, and they won at Amazon, and Jeff Bezos has to pay attention. And while Jeff Bezos, who was taking his dick rocket to the moon, there were flight attendants on those rockets calling us and saying, we want to organize. We are one, and we are everywhere. this too. The revolution is happening at universities across this country. And you know what that means? That means we're going to have all kinds of people who have taken action together at their campuses. They're going to take that out into their work sites. They're going to do the kind of organizing that needs to be done so that the people write the rules of capitalism. Fuck the billionaires! <laughs>
give yourselves all a round of applause for coming out with a BOG with not. Ain't nothing but a little snow. And I want to say real quick, thanks to Aaron Santana and Soli Smith, PhD candidates in American Studies, who ran our morning panel. If you were there this morning or watched it online, you know how transformative that conversation was. All right, we're going to bring up now President and Vice President of the full-time unit, uh, Becky Given and Todd Wilson, and the President of our PTL union, Amy Heiger. Let's give it up for Kyle Reese Mandel. Kyle's been holding it down today. Thank you, Kyle. I woke up this morning. I knew the BOG stayed home. The governor stayed in their houses while we worry about rent. Grad workers don't make a living wage. PTLs make a fraction of what they should be making. I woke up. I got a strike authorization ballot. I voted yes! I wrote to my colleagues. I told them I voted yes. I told them they better get on it. And I came over here to see this beautiful show of solidarity. Those of us who are more comfortable, and that includes me, are here to stand with everybody who works or studies at Rutgers. We are one. HPAE, URA, part-time faculty, full-time faculty, grad workers, postdocs, counselors, we stand together. We have built power, and the Board of Governors, by staying home, they can't fight that. We're ready, we're standing together, and we will win. Thank you for this, for this inspiring rally. I can't, I can't believe I have to follow Sarah Nelson and Chris Smalls. Uh, there's nothing I could say that would be more inspiring than they've been to my, to my life. <laughs> but uh, very quickly, um, it is for our students that we are out here to see so many of you here. Young people in the labor movement, that's the future of this democracy, the future of this country. That's what we're out here for. Something is very wrong at Rutgers, we all know it when football coaches get hired for multi-semester contracts and millions of dollars and faculty who teach tens of thousands of students every semester have to reapply for their jobs every time. And get paid less than $6,000 a course. We're here, we are here today, this campaign is to right this wrong. Right? So, to the Board of Governors who are too afraid to show up to hear our voices, to President Holloway, you can run, but you can't hide. We will win equal pay for equal work, job security, and health care for those who need it. Nobody working at this university should go without health care. Adjunct faculty, our Rutgers faculty, join your union today and vote yes to authorize a strike. All right, so it's my job to bring us all in to what was supposed to be a Board of Governors meeting. <laughs> But let me remind you something and paint a little picture for you. While we're out here fighting for equal pay, for equal work, they're in their homes drinking champagne and talking about the next multi-million dollar athletics coach that they hired while they just fired one last year. And while we're out here fighting for a rent freeze for our community and fighting to end student debt at our university, they're planning the next school takeover in New Brunswick, Camden, or Newark. Boo. While we're out here fighting for dignity on the job, they are in there patting themselves on the back on their beautiful stock portfolio. That's right. We know who they are, and we know who runs this university. We run this university. Who runs this university? Who runs 
this university? We do! Who runs this university? We do! Who runs this university? We do! Students, staff, doctors, nurses, residents, faculty, adjunct faculty, grad workers, postdocs, all together, undergrad community, all of us together, we run this university. Now, we are still going in, even though they don't have the courage to show up, we are still going into the Board of Governors today. And we are gonna go in, and we are gonna tell them what our intentions are if they don't give us a fair contract in the next few weeks. We are gonna go in, and we are gonna chant, strike, 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 but before we do that, I'm going to give us our amazing leader, Aaron Santana. What's up, y'all? I don't know about you, but I was a little sad when the university decided to move classes online last night. And thank you for all making me so much happier. The thing that stuck with me from this morning's panel is when Chris Small said that organizing is about relationships. And so I hope that you stick around. We're going to go. We're going to have the People's Board of Governors in there. Then we're going to go back to Conklin 100. We're going to feed you. We're going to have some pizza. We're going to have an amazing panel at 2.30. We're going to talk about what a strike will actually look like. And then we're going to go to Kilkenny's. And we're going to have a beer. And we're going to listen to the Randy Hayes Trio. And we're all going to be best friends by the end of tonight.
Billionaires, they gotta go! Pizza is safe for the panel, all right? Yeah.